From the Intellfluence headquarters in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, this is the Intellfluence Influencer Spotlight. In each episode, we sit down with an influencer from our network and we discuss their background as well as their unique approach to influencer marketing. Catherine, Tammy, and Michael Pappas run the popular lifestyle site, Living the Gourmet, which specializes in recipes, reviews, and wine features. To the Pappas family, the heart of their home lies within the kitchen. Catherine created Living the Gourmet back in 2008 with the help and encouragement of her son and daughter. Since that time, Living the Gourmet has grown into a popular food site with an active and growing community of like-minded food enthusiasts. You can check out the mouth-watering recipes at livingthegourmet.com or follow on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter to name a few. So what led you to create Living the Gourmet? Uh, actually, my son. All right, Michael. What led you to create Living the Gourmet? It really started, uh, well, it started in 2008, more or less as a repository for family recipes. Um, my mother would always talk about how her mother would, you know, create this or create that and how, you know, she wishes that she could really have, you know, created the recipes the way her mother used to. And so it started really as that. And I said, you know, why don't you start a blog and, you know, just start throwing recipes up. And it really started to grow in the best way possible from there, which is organically and as a labor of love without really intending it to turn into you know a business or you know a venture of any kind and people just really started responding very very well after that and um then i would say it was i believe it was you can correct me if i'm wrong 2011 or 12 where we got you know our first really big break which was um really out of the blue was Jackie Collins oh, decided that she No, that to, was after the storm because yeah, we had it like we lost time. everything in in uh, Sandy. So then everything just kind of went flat for a long time because we had to move out and everything. And then it was so sweet. I got this email from Jackie Collins publisher that I would review her cookbook. And that just gave me like so much energy to say somebody wants me to, you know, a person like her. And um, that really was my B12 shot <laughs> to get back. And Jackie Collins was one of my big idols for a long, long time. And when my mother came to me, I, was, I remember I was at my desk and I forget what I was working on. She said, Mike, you're never going to believe it. Jackie Collins wants to be on the website. And I'm like, are you kidding? You know, it's just one of those things, and that really started putting us on the map. And it was just one thing led to another after that. We, you know, like you know, the rest of history here we are today. And uh, yeah. that's that's so, really how it started. And how something it grew, short right? of, of just just one day after another, one foot in front of the other, and we're still trying. Wonderful. And it's it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Because. I never make the same thing twice. So like my mother never made the same thing twice. And that's why she was Sicilian and my dad was from Northern Italy. And boy, we grew up with really just lots of good, simple, plain food that I think cooking keeps a family together because when you walk into a house and you smell all that good cooking, you just want to stay. And I think that's what keeps the kids coming back and their friends and, and it keeps a family together. That, really that, that's wonderful. And I have to ask you, cause I have you, I, I love Italian cooking. Um, and, and I think there's a common misconception that people, you know, go to the Olive Garden and it's a big plate of pasta and then every Italian has tiramisu for dessert and everything like that, but it's quite different, correct? There's more of an emphasis on, on meats and vegetables with a little bit of pasta here and there. Is, is that correct? It's peasant food, really, and it's healthy. My mom, we always had vegetables. We always had, um, you know, like if you buy beets, the stems of the beets get cooked up with, you know, a little garlic and oil and spaghetti. Uh, it's not heavy sauces. It's not that sort of thing. It's a lot of fish. It's a lot of salads. No mayonnaise. Um, you know, 
grow up eating that. You don't grow up eating, um, you know, all these heavy, thick, no butter, no butter. You don't really use butter. Butter is never put on the table, you know. So it's a good, it's a good healthy, if you read like, oh, you should be eating olive oil. Oh, you should be eating garlic. Oh, you should be eating this. It's, I've, I've been eating that my whole life. And, you know, it's like, just and and it's not true that oh if you eat garlic you can't talk to anybody. Everybody eats the garlic and then you can all talk to each other. Exactly, exactly, and wash it down with the San Giovese or something, you know. And, and like desserts, food. you always put nuts on the table. Like meals went on for hours and mm -hmm. lots and lots of people. So then you would have the roasted nuts, which is so, people tell you so healthy for you. Then you have a, a bowl of fruit, and then everybody's peeling an orange and peeling this and that. And, and then, then you have your desserts, and you know, which are usually little, and then you have your demi tasks, like all this um, frappuccino, cappuccino, all of this. It's not, it's not Italian. You just have a little demi tasks after dinner, a little black coffee with a little maybe anisette in it and a little sugar. But all these frothy, this, that, it's not really, it's not really real. Yeah, and I think no. the heavier food... Is... And you pay a fortune exactly. for it. Exactly. Why do you want, you know... <laughs> exactly. I think the heavier food has its place, but I mean, that's not an every night affair. I mean, that's really more... That, that's, no. that's festival, festival food, really. Interesting. Um, but I think also... Like when you're cooking like that and you're eating like that on a daily basis, meaning the way my mother just described, you tend to lose sight of just how uncommon that is today. Uh, because it, like, you know, it, it's considered, you know, gourmet or it's considered. Um, like if you go in, into the right, supermarket yeah. and you, um, they used to hand my mother a bag of bones, you mm -hmm. know, have grizzle bones and things like that. And you make soup and this and that out of it. And now they charge you six dollars a pound for those ones, mm -hmm. or oxtails, or this or that. But anyway, yeah, okay. we also are trying to learn a little bit of, um, you know, how to modernize it. But mm. really, I think people like like the real thing. Like even though you try yeah. to make it, I think like they don't always agree with me, which is okay. But I say, no, I want to do it my way, because I think that people like real food and real cooking, you know, and it's And, it's tasty. and definitely with all of these, these, you know, these fad diets that come in and out of existence, you know, when they hear about the cooking that you just described, in the garlic and oil, you know, very much back to basics, very back to real ingredients, they tend to get, you know, become more receptive to that because they know inherently that it's, you know, it's healthier because, you know, you, it's just common sense. You can't eat the heavy sauces and the heavy cheeses every day. Say, oh, garlic and oil, you know, that has to be healthier. You know? And so there is very much a modern audience for it, even if it's not necessarily a, a widespread uh, perception. Of the I don't believe in things. I don't believe in things. All right, so you talked about how you never make like the same dish twice. So how much of your time is spent developing recipes for your site? Well, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I love to think about food. I love to go, my, one of my favorite, like they laugh at me, but one of my favorite places to go is the supermarket because I know everybody in the supermarket and they make fun of me, but I have fun in the supermarket. I really do. So if I see something, then I'll say, oh, I'd like to do that with this. And, you know, like if the fish is looking really good, or if I see a certain piece of meat, and I say, oh, maybe I'll do that. So I like to try to think about what I'd like to do, but it, it doesn't always work that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just get in the kitchen, and all of a sudden you think of it. But and we, we try sometimes to plan things out. Uh, we try sometimes to uh, develop recipes ahead of time, and it very rarely works out that way. It, it's much more of a, a um, 
an ad hoc, I guess, creative initiative. My daughter is more of a planner. Right. She likes to write everything down mm -hmm. and have everything in order. And that's a good thing. And not that I don't plan or I'm scatterbrain, but it doesn't always work out because not everything is always yeah, I, available. I think that's one thing that really, I think, we learned by experience is very important when you're working in an industry like this, which is basically creative and entertainment, is you have to find your work process. And even if you maybe think your work process should be another way, you have to learn to work around it, you know, and say, all right, this is how things turn out. This is this is the way we work best. Let's make it work. Well, exactly. And in, in the imagery on your on your site, Living the Gourmet is beautiful. Um, did you take any classes for that, or was it self taught? This is Tammy. And this is a Tammy question. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. Hi. I'm just gonna that over. Um, no, I was self taught really with photography. It's something that started early, like um, a hobby oh, of mine, and I really just came to enjoy it and um, basically just learning from other photographers and bloggers and just playing around and practicing on my own um, and then finding our own style and our own um, identity. Yeah, it's a really nice consistent aesthetic. We really, we really enjoyed it. Because the video is really nice too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Together and she's really, I mean, she, it's just come such a long way from using the phone and now she has a camera and everything yeah we started out using the iphone only and then we uh transitioned over to the the camera but for a while like in the early stages of the blog we only shot on our iphones <laughs> so that was crazy and interesting yes yeah. i would do it and now no one lets me take a picture <laughs> But that's okay. Yeah, it's like setting up a photo shoot now for a meal. I always joke and I always say bloggers never have a hot meal. <laughs> no, by the time you finish, <laughs> yeah. you know, or you want everything to look pretty and whatnot. I think, you know, you eat with your eyes first. That's and, what the French say, right? Yes. Yeah. And you don't... Um, so I'd like to try to make it look pretty and nice and appealing i think you've described the plight of every person on instagram is their food's cold by the time they get to eat it <laughs> and what has been some of your favorite collaborations with brands to date oh oh my um i love collaborating with the different wine brands because i like pairing the food with the wines i just think that that's um very elegant I really enjoy that. So that's some of my favorite collaborations, the different uh, wineries. And uh, what we, here on Long Island, it has since become a wine in, in, uh, uh, place. They, uh, Audi, they have a lot of new wineries and it was a lot of fun collaborating with the different wineries that are local mm -hmm. and pairing the food. And so those were some of my favorite because it just, I hear it was local, it was places that I grew up going out, out east, and now it's like putting your own little place, Long Island, which is big, and, but, you know, for, on the map for wineries. Yeah. And it adds a personal element mm -hmm. to the content, and that's important for connecting with the audience and the readers. So, yeah. And especially when we were uh, um, researching um, the wines for Long Island for that piece that we did. You say, you know, Long Island now we have this terrible weather. We have this very cramped space. We have astronomical land prices. How are we producing good wines here? And that turned out to be, you know, this big tilt for the story. And that was, that was, a, you know, quite a learning curve. That was, you know, really doing the wines does become quite a lot of and that's, that's, I think that's fun because when you're enjoying it, I think that really bleeds into the material. Want to join IntelliFluence as an influencer for free? It's easy. Visit IntelliFluence.com, click on the Influencers link, and then click on the Join for Free button to sign up. Once you have registered, you will get immediate access to our influencer marketplace where you can browse relevant offers from brands and apply on the spot. You'll also be eligible to receive attractive product and service pitches from brands. 
There's absolutely no cost to join as an influencer, so we hope you take advantage of our service. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and well, you know the drill. Until our next episode, keep being awesome.